Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Out here in the USA, the IRS, or Internal Revenue Service, is amongst the most hated government organizations in existence. Now, I don't know if the folks in Germany have the same attitude towards uh, the taxmen in their country, but I wouldn't blame them if they do. Yet it was from such tariff takers that one of Germany's great automotive innovators emerged. So let's dive into the man that was arguably Germany's third greatest early car innovator after Benz and Daimler, Friedrich Lutzmann. He was born in 1859 in Nienburg, Germany, the first son of the local tax collector, which wasn't his fault. Uh, young Friedrich was good with tools, and his early education focused on engineering as per his father's and his own desire. Yet the trades were more available to him, and thus he began a number of apprenticeships, first as a plumber for a few years, and then as a toolmaker. He entered the German army in his late teens for a couple of years, whom also benefited from his intuitive mechanical mind in the Corps of Engineers. His rather varied educational path eventually led him to locksmithing. By 1880, he was done with his military service and was well known for his ability both with his designing mind and a blowtorch. Metalworking, specifically artistic metalworking, was on the rise at the time and he worked in a number of shops, the metalworks owned by Hermann Darm in Dresden being particularly influential. Friedrich's very precise and meticulous work led him to more opportunities, which brought him to Italy in 1884. His work garnished much attention, and his ornamental gates with custom locks grew in demand amongst the nobility. He even designed and built the gate for the palace of the Prince of Anhalt, for which he was awarded with the title of Master Court Locksmith. Now back in Germany, he opened his own shop and also maintained the carriages of the court. He invented and patented the adjustable shearing beam holder, which made the task of hitching horses to the carriages much easier and quicker. His locksmithing shop expanded in 1890 to include the sale and repair of bicycles, offering the Rover brand. Yet Benz and Daimler had invented gas-powered cars a few years prior, and Lutzmann was keen to get into the business. Friedrich purchased a Benz Victoria, and once he got it home, he studied both how it was built and how he could possibly make money with the cars beyond just selling them. He built his first car in 1893 in his shop, located in Dessau. By 1895, he went into full production. The Lutzmann cars were well-engineered, artistically designed, and perfect for the noble patrons he had acquired over the years. His engines were of his own design, all single-cylinder and ranging from 1,500 to 3,500 cc's and 1.5 to 9 horsepower. The bodywork on his cars followed the coach and carriage traditions of the day. Black lacquer over a wrought iron frame, gilded with gold accents and filigree. He also invented a new type of belt transmission which allowed the driver to change gears with just one lever, making the operation of the car a lot easier. Another innovation was his method of cooling the engine. Radiators as we know them were not yet invented, and most internal combustion engines, be they iron cars or stationary, used water tanks to spray the cylinder with water and allow it to evaporate, a total loss system and not particularly efficient. Lutzmann replaced the tank with a primitive form of radiator, where the water does not evaporate, but is rather cooled by flowing through small tubes that were exposed to the open air. As the car moved forward, it caused a wind across the tubes, and thus cooled the water within them. All of his models of cars, and there were over a dozen of them, were named Arrow. Arrow 0, Arrow 1, Arrow 1B, Arrow 2, and so on. And though he did sell some of them, others he used himself by forming another company, Germany's first automotive taxi service. 
initially offering commuter service between Dessau to Morlitz and finally Aiken. Indeed, he built a number of buses, the first in Germany, to offer bench seating for up to 16 passengers, which, at one mark per passenger, was quite profitable. At the same time, he used his arrows as actual taxis in and around Dessau, turning a nice profit. It is notable and quite possible that the first traffic ticket ever issued to the driver of a car was driving a Lutzmann. A certain John Cousin purchased a Lutzmann Arrow 1 and brought it to his home in South Sea in the United Kingdom in early 1896. A mere few weeks later, he was cited for violating the Red Flag Act. Mr. Cousin argued that his car was not steam-powered and thus was exempt, but the judge disagreed and imposed a fine of one shilling. Not much punishment, but it did send a message. Cousin would work with Harry Lawson to fight the, for automotive rights in the UK, resulting in the revocation of the Red Flag Act in October of 1896. Friedrich Lutzmann would produce his cars until 1898. He displayed uh, his cars at Germany's first international auto exhibition in 1897, which was organized by the newly founded Central European Motor Car Association, of which Friedrich was a founding member. At that show, Adam Opel approached him about selling his company, and Opel purchased Lutzmann Auto Works in 1898, moving it to, to Russellsheim. Friedrich would continue to be an important influence in Germany's car industry and legislation until his death in 1930. Though this son of a tax man is not well known outside of Germany, his inventions and business savvy helped shape and create the foundation of the modern German automotive industry. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we will see you next week. Peace.